Well, the environmental impact of U.S. agriculture has been gaining attention from both urban and also rural areas. Over the past few months, there's been a lot of buzz about sustainability and conservation and carbon credits. Well, USDA Undersecretary in Residence at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, Greg Ibaugh, joins us now with the latest. And as always, thank you for very much for very much for joining us here, Undersecretary. We appreciate your time. Now, for those who don't know, what are some of the most common misconceptions about the environmental impact of agriculture? Well, I think the two biggest misconceptions, Janet, are that uh, we got it all figured out and it's simple. Mm -hmm. What we're doing right now at the University of Nebraska is we're looking back at 40 years of research where we've done things to look at how uh, uh, carbon sequestered in different soil types under different tillage and rangeland uh, conditions and we're gonna try to catalog those so that we can look and understand the science and be able to advise farmers and ranchers about what the conditions on their farm might mean to them as far as carbon. So give us an update, if you would, on carbon credits and how they work. Well, carbon credits is based on a theory that uh, there's some things that you do in your business in your manufacturing firm or on your farm that sequester carbon out of the environment and put it back into the soil or into the plant material. And there's some things that you do like driving your car or taking your kids to school that uh, emit carbon. And so the carbon trading system is based on the concept that uh, those that sequester earn credits and those that uh, you know uh, emit need to uh, perhaps buy credits to cover those sins. As a farmer or rancher myself, my concern is that if I sell my credits off my ranch and then I try to sell my calves and the, the carbon company comes to the feedlot and says, hey, you need to pay us for some of those carbons uh, that you're releasing into the environment, that he's just gonna bid less for my calves. So what we'd like to do at the university is figure out, is there a model where I can transfer my credit with my calves, the corn farmer can transfer his credits with his corn, and we have a beef production system. Now, Nebraska is known as the beef state, and the environmental impact of beef production has certainly received a lot of attention through the years. Now, I understand UNL is hosting an event to debunk some common misconceptions about the industry. What can you tell us about it? Well, we're going to have uh, Frank Milauner from uh, University of California, Davis. We're going to have Galen Erickson from UNL. We're going to have Larry Quint from ConAgra. And we're going to have Colin Woodall from NCBA join us at a Hewerman lecture on October 25th to talk about the system, uh, the, the winners, the losers, and how we balance those out. Now, if folks wanted more information on that event, where could they find those details? Well, they can find those details at uh, unl.edu, and then we can also, they can watch it on uh, live streamed or recorded. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Under Secretary Greg Iba with the University of Nebraska Lincoln's Institute of Ag and Natural Resources connecting with us this morning. Again, thank you very much, Under Secretary.